All right, I'm here with Mr. Jeff Otto. He's the guy that's behind a cool company. Now, haven't we haven't I don't think we've ever had a pet photographer on this week in photo before. So this is this is the first time. So um, he runs a company called Shaggy Shutterbug Pet Photography. The domain name for that is Shaggy Shutter Shaggy Shutterbug dot com. Shaggy Shutterbug dot com. And uh, he's agreed to come on and sort of give us a. Uh, you know, sort of a one-on-one on photographing those furry critters. So, so Jeff, welcome to This Week in Photo. Thanks, Frederick. All right, cool. Let's let's jump right into it. So, uh, you know, I've, I've taken photos of my cat before, you know, so, <laughs> and I know even that can be challenging. So, yeah. let's just start, let's, before we dive into the A's and B's or the A's to Z's of pet photography, let's talk a little bit about you and how how you sort of wove into this niche? Are you just a natural animal lover that happened to have a camera or how did it go? A little bit of that. You know, I've um, always had dogs all my life and uh, always been around dogs and always loved animals. Um, But I guess, you know, started out in film school just taking pictures of animals, wildlife, sometimes of dogs and things like that. I went to film school at Ithaca, New York a few years back. Okay. And, uh, yeah, um... Actually, at the time, I, I uh, was somewhat criticized by my photography teachers for too much wildlife photography and too much animal photography. And I guess hmm. um, was, I had a very like avant-garde teacher who wanted us to do really experimental work and really um, kind of extreme. Uh, he wanted to see something very, very deep and meaningful and wanted us to really go out there with the work, which I tried, but... It kind of came back to this a lot, and uh, that's interesting. So they were, they were you. You were clearly demonstrating a love for a certain vertical or niche in photography. And they're like, no, no, go over here, do this thing. <laughs> I always remember. I'll never forget. I was in the critique, and it was the one time I thought he was kind of like going with a critique uh, or giving me positive feedback about a critique. And then he said, "Well, the the biggest problem with your photographs is they look." They really just look like something out of National Geographic, and you need to strive for something higher. Wait a minute, that was that was a criticism. <laughs> that was the criticism I got. I, I really went out of that out of that critique session with you know throwing my hands up in the air and going, huh? Yeah, yeah. That, that's called all credibility it. lost. That's kind of like, you know, I want to be a fashion photographer, and the teacher's like, you know, your stuff really looks too much like Vogue or something. You know, you need to dumb it down a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, he he was looking for a certain thing, and he was trying to get everyone to do that certain thing, and uh, I, I it kind of turned me off from photography for a while, honestly. So I really I didn't pursue it that heavily. I ended up uh, focusing in screenwriting, and ended up working as an entertainment journalist for years. That's actually yeah. mostly what I've been doing in LA for. I've been here ten years. That's what I did for the first eight, for the most part. Yeah. But so I, how how did you jump into pet photography? So you're so in LA was it like you know what um, you know there's models and actresses and actors in abundance down there of course. So what what moved you over to pets? Is it is, was it more lucrative? It was just something that you loved the most, or yeah, it was something I loved. Um, I always had my camera with me, and I, honestly, I'd be taking um, shots for some of the sites I was writing for of actors and actresses and selling the pictures on the side. And or sometimes selling them as part of the articles I wrote. But then um, it's actually two two parts that got me into the pet photography. One was my dog. Um, I, you'll like this name, I guess. Uh, my red Doberman named Badonkadonk. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. He he was sort of my test subject as I got into the photography. As I got new equipment, and whatever. He was a good sport. He'd always come out with me on shoots and stuff. I go on hikes with him and take pictures of him and. Uh, you know, he, he kind of know whenever a new box came from B and H or Amazon that uh, Dad, like Dad's gonna be happy today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah, it was it was him and just taking pictures of him and and just the reactions I was getting from people. And then um, I went back and took some classes at UCLA in their extension program mm-hmm. about three or four years ago, and uh, just started getting. It was a very different uh, response I got from the teachers there. Um, I, I wasn't doing only pet work, but the pet work I did, which was mostly of my dog at the time, um, was getting very positive response from. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, my fiance, Melissa, was starting a dog training business, um, which has since uh, launched and very successful now. And she's she's doing that all the time. So some of her clients uh, started noticing my pictures of Badonkadonk. And then I would take pictures of their dog, or I'd show up at the classes and take group shots and that kind of thing. And 
little by little, people started asking me, you know, what I would charge to do a session with their dog, and I kind of went, uh, well, at, at the same time, one of my teachers was encouraging me to, to try to figure out something more to do with my photography or consider whether I'd want to do it professionally. He liked my work a lot, and, you know, I was showing him the pet photography stuff I'd done from the classes, and he was really encouraging. So it was a very different experience than I had years back in film school. Oh, right. And, uh, yeah, little by little, it just started growing into something, and I started scouring the web, figuring out what domains were out there and what I could come up with with a, with a name that would sound good. And, you know, I wanted to, to do kind of like a, something fun, a little fun-spirited. I wanted to be – a lot of the pet photography I saw out there was, was studio work, and mm -hmm. some of it was very, very pretty and, and nice, but it was uh, very eloquent. I wanted sort of more of like a personality-driven pet More photojournalistic kind of raw, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I wanted like, what I noticed about the shots is that when I did the studio st uh, stuff here and there is that the dogs didn't look that comfortable, mm -hmm. and you got kind of the same shot. You know, if you were shooting a wine runner, all the wine runners look the same, or all the Dobermans look the same, but, uh, you know, if I did a park or a dog park or at the client's homes, uh, I started getting something else, and so little by little, I stopped even offering the studio stuff, really, and never did that much of it, hmm. so, uh, yeah, I just... Uh, well, how do, so is it, is it, how do you get clients before we get into the mechanics of it? Is it, sure. is it word of mouth, mouth mostly? Is it, you know, are you on Facebook advertising? How does that work? It's a few things. Um, it's word of mouth, obviously a lot of referrals through Melissa's business. Right. right. Um, and, uh, Yelp has actually been really big for me. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Reviews on Yelp. So my clients started reviewing me early and, uh, so I've gotten a lot of contact through that. And as I was mentioning earlier, I'm, slowly but surely checking off the list of Google Plus and all those things. I've got a Facebook page, but yep, I've been yep. a, little, a little slack at uh, getting all that stuff going. But yeah, it's, it's primarily word of mouth and through, we've, you know, I, I help my fiance out with her business too. So we, we're very linked into the dog world at this point. So we have like a vet office we work through and, and they've um, referred for some pet photography and things like that. So through that whole little dog circle and in Santa Monica, we're sort of the, the dog-centric couple. Uh, she was actually named the official dog trainer of Santa Monica. Oh, Kiki. that's cool. So, that's so, cool. So she always, you know, I did all the photos for her cards and for her website. So sometimes people ask her where the photos are from. So I get a lot of work that way. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. So then, so then pricing wise, so like for an average session, well, take me through the session. Like, you know, sure. so I'm a, I'm a dog owner and I, I call you up or I email you or, you know, I otherwise get in contact with you and I have a, let's say I don't have a dog right now, but let's say I have a, a German shepherd and I want to get photos of my German shepherd and I just call you up. What, what are next steps? I uh, usually I get on the phone with you. I ask some questions about the dog. Um, how comfortable they are with the camera. I mean, these days it's kind of good because everyone's shoving a cell phone in their dog's face and taking pictures at some point. So mm -hmm. it's not the first time a dog's seen a camera, but usually they haven't seen a camera as big as mine. Right, <laughs> right. And the big lens and everything. But um, so I, I find out a little bit about the dog, how comfortable they are with strangers. Um, you know, I, when I go in for the actual session, I spend a little time getting to know them before I actually do the shoot too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I kind of go over what they're looking for, whether they want to be in the shots, whether they're looking for shots of just the dog, whether they're looking for action shots, whether they're looking for, you know, what sort of are their favorite parts of their dog's personality and what, what they want to see. Usually, you know, they want to see, they always tell me that there's like a certain look or certain thing their dog does, but they never can quite get that shot. Yeah. So I try to aim for that. That's cool. So you get in, get to that nugget of whatever the personality is and try to pull that out. Yeah. 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 Usually uh, by the end of the session, the dogs are usually exhausted. So we always get some cute shots of them napping or passing out. <laughs> everyone likes that at the end. That's just like a normal it. model, right? <laughs> exactly. And then everyone, you know, always tells me that it's great because at the end of the shoot or at the end of the day, their dog's just relaxed and sleeping for the rest of the day. So especially That's the correct. dogs, the uh, owners with young puppies and stuff are appreciative of uh, the post shoot nap time <laughs> yeah that's cool yeah the post game show so then so then yeah. what happens after the shoot so you go in you're shooting i'm presuming you say you're using a, a, a longer lens what are what gear are you using yeah um my main gear is a uh d7000 nikon d7000 <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know you're a nikon guy yeah uh yeah and, uh, pretty much the 24 to 70 28 never leaves my camera um yep. 
once in a while I actually I use the the fish eye, the DX fish eye, the, the Nikon one. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you, I don't know if you've ever seen the. I think they call it the Dog. Is the company that has those um, sort of silly looking cards you see with the um, j- dogs with the giant heads? Uh, no, I don't think I've seen those. Yeah, yeah I, I'll send you a, a link to it. You'll, yeah, send me a link. We'll put in the we'll put in the notes. <laughs> but with the fish eye, you get that look. You, you can't really use the fish eye with people, but everyone likes the humorous look you get with dogs. Love it. So, love it. Okay, so th- so then you're out there shooting. Um, dogs tired. You get back. You have your 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 SD card full of images. You yeah. load them in, uh, um, and then what's the you, and you post process them? Of, of course, yeah. you know. Do your yeah. post processing now? Do yeah. you do you do the okay? Here's a gallery, and then the clients can pick images, or yeah. do have they already purchased a set package? How does that go? Yeah, they generally purchase a set package, but they can upgrade to a different package or buy packages of prints. Um, like I guess a lot of you know, I hear this on your show talked about a lot. Um, I struggle with the idea of whether people are even wanting prints or mm-hmm. whether uh, it should be digital. So I've been m- more and more flexible on that and sort of learning as I go and figuring out h- how the best way to handle that is. Yeah. But uh, generally, I give them a certain amount of prints. I give them what they call uh, what I call a web Facebook disk, which is a disk of watermarked lower res images that they can share online, but they're not print quality. Yeah. And then. Um, yeah, generally a, you know, a week or two turnaround, I say, polish them up in Lightroom. I do a small amount of black and white stuff. I do um, I, I send the gallery through Smug Mug generally. So mm-hmm. I send them a Smug Mug gallery with, you know, depending on the package, anywhere from 25 to 100 images. Cool, cool. You, and, yeah. then, and then, you know, of course it varies per package, but what are we looking at price-wise overall to get, you know, to get you to, to shoot my pet? Yeah, uh, the packages start at two twenty five. Yeah, okay. So and range up to about five hundred, I think, is my top package, which I get here and there. But mostly, most people are in the two twenty five to three hundred, which are the the I have you know sort of funny names for the packages, like the simply shack, the simply shaggy. I think is the uh, <laughs> most basic package that most people choose. Yeah. <laughs> um, which just basically includes to double check, but I think it's you know uh, a few eight by tens. Uh, maybe six four by seven some wallets um some of that may be a little antiquated i'm realizing yeah. no one really wants wallets anymore so i always right. tell people that uh they can trade up what they want or i can trade them for some some higher res digital i just sort of learned early on that uh and i, and I know this is a struggle i've heard other photographers talk about on your show is how to sort of find that balance is something i'm still yeah. working on where if you give someone a disc at the beginning i was giving a disc a high res images and then i went to some clients houses and saw just terrible terrible printouts mm-hmm. of those. yeah so yeah your calling card printed by walmart right <laughs> exactly so i tried to keep my print prices really low tried to work with people tried to explain to them that when they do order prints from me I mean, it's not a matter of me just printing it that i'm spending some time that you know, I'm using color calibrated monitors and all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. and I am taking some into account how they're going to frame it, what color frame it's going to be, and I try to, you know, make some adjustments according to that. And most people seem to understand once I explain it to them. Yeah. You know, I just, uh, but I, I, I've been more and more flexible. That's what I've learned in the few years I've been doing this as a business. That, uh, you know, it's a it's a changing market constantly, and. Uh, Prints are less and less popular. Uh, oh, yeah. Canvases, yeah. Have, canvases have become really popular, so I've been really uh, selling a lot of canvases lately. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, that's it, uh, I was thinking as you were saying that the, your, if you come up with an entry-level package, I think you should call it the Scooby Snack. You know? Scooby Snack, I like that. Because <laughs> it's little, you know, you can't get enough of them. It's a snoo- Scooby Snack. And yeah. my, my Doberman Badonkadonk, sometimes people thought he looked like Scooby-Doo. He had big oh. floppy. He's a Doberman, but he was red, so he had uh, oh, he was about a cool. hundred pounds. So people sometimes, and he loved food, loved snacks. Yeah. So, so <laughs> what's what's next for the the Shaggy Shutterbug? What's the what's what, are you are you going to expand into different towns, or you know, you going to maybe add people to your repertoire? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't just do pets. You know, yeah. I, I do yeah. some tied into the entertainment work I used to do. I sometimes do some live events, a um, little bit of music work. Uh, here and there when it pops up. Yeah. I've done a little bit of like headshot kind of stuff and uh, family portraits, a lot of that. Yeah. So um, a lot of times a client, it's happened quite a few times now where a client hires me for their pets and then ends up 
hiring me for like a family Christmas card or yeah. for I did a 70th birthday party for a musician cool. and uh, that kind of stuff. So yeah, I mean, the idea right now is, you know, I've got a few friends and some other photographers that have helped me out. You know, maybe down the line, I see it as having some other photographers who do the shoots as well. Mm -hmm. um, but haven't really gotten there yet. I'm just kind of working on continuing to get out there myself and got to stop putting off some of the social networking aspects of the business that yeah. I yeah. need to sit. I need to spend more time in front of the computer and keep uh, growing the business. But right now, the goal is just get out there and keep shooting and yes you know, get lots of, uh, you know, I, I go off some of the dog events and things like that. I go to some dog shows. I've been to, a, LA has a ton of dog centric events and dog festivals and dog parades. And so I, wow. I go to a lot of that stuff. Wow. I've actually shot, I think five dog birthday parties. Huh. Over, yeah. <laughs> a dog birthday party. Really? <laughs> yeah. Very, sometimes very elaborate. Like they've been everything from like a backyard party to a full-on rented out location with labeled um, beer bottles and water bottles with the dog's custom pictures on them. Yeah. Mo the most recent one, they actually had my photography all over it, which is cool because I'd done some shoots with them in the past. So I had, my photos were on water bottles and on the cake and yeah. on uh, banners for the party. <laughs> So, yeah. All right. I, I, have one, I have one final question for you. This may be a little sensitive. Yeah. Um, what do you have against cats? <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing against cats. I mean, that was actually uh, something I've been asked here and there, but you, you don't get that many people asking about their cats. Really? I, I've, I've shot a few cats with owners that had dogs. Okay. So, They're like, oh, yeah, here's Fluffy. Come on in here, Fluffy. <laughs> it always seems to be like a... a a second and afterthought so far with clients. I'm always Poor open cats, man. <laughs> I actually have a, I have a, uh, a baby, I guess you call it a cub, a bobcat that I shot at a nature preserve. And, uh, I use that on my business cards as like my one non dog photo. <laughs> yeah. say, I, I don't think people even realize it's a bobcat, but it looks like just a house cat. But, uh, yeah. yeah. So I'm open to cats. I'm open to ferrets and fish. <laughs> And any other kind of pets that are out there. But what's the weirdest? What's the weirdest <laughs> pet that you've photographed so far? Uh, I don't know if there's been anything that weird. There, I mean, there's got to be some weird pets in L.A. Like somebody with alligators in their house or something. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all been dogs. It's mostly sometimes it's weird dogs that are uh, you know dogs that have a, a strange phobia or uh, I had one dog that just growled at me constantly and bit oh. me every time I came close. So I, really? Yeah, I actually ended up getting a few good shots. Of the teeth I, coming out, like, <laughs> towards the camera lens? Time I, you know, you're, you got your, your face in the camera, so you're not really seeing the periphery, and the dog went around the side, and I just felt a snap on the hand. Wow. <laughs> pulled away, so. <laughs> you know, I've, I've, uh, you always come armed with treats and, and things, squeaky toys and things like that, so, uh, yeah. I, I always, uh, yeah, I've only had I think that one dog that was actually sort of violent about it, but right, right. Yeah. But yeah, I can. I, I wish I could give you a better weird animal story. You got yeah. it. Well, I'm sure they'll come. I'm sure. I'm sure they'll they'll come. Come. <laughs> There's definitely uh, some odd phone calls that don't pan out. You know, people that have seven dogs or something like that. But uh -huh. uh, wow. Usually, usually they just call and don't. It doesn't really go any further than that. <laughs> yeah. I get a call from somebody with a exotic animal. There's got to be, you know, I don't know, chimpanzees or lions in some houses out here i'm sure i'm sure there's all kinds of weird stuff out there that's cool yeah. well cool so you're at uh, shaggy shutterbug.com that's the domain and you're working on social so you'll have that up soon and we'll be able to yeah. share that facebook page yelp page right now um it's just you reminded me this morning asking about google plus so i just started working on that a little bit there cool. is a google plus page but it's not very fleshed out yet yep but, cool. Uh, yeah, coming along. Coming well, cool, along. man. Well, congratulations on on uh, getting this business going. I always love to hear you know photographers that are doing working photographers making money doing the stuff that they love and and yeah. you're in a really vertical niche there. So that's it's well, it sounds vertical, but it could be broad, right? Because mostly yeah. everybody has a pet these days. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun, and everybody has a pet. And you know, the biggest struggle I think was just differentiating myself from everybody's got like a million pics of their dog on their iPhone or whatever. So right. you know, I get that all the time where people find out I'm a pet photographer and they want to show me their pictures. And I just try to let my work speak for itself and I'll show them my pictures. And sometimes they're convinced and sometimes, you know, they just admire it and that's that. But yeah, 
know, hopefully I try to do what I can to distinguish my work and show them what I can do for them versus, you know, we're all taking pictures all the time. So you got to set yourself apart, I guess. Yeah. When, one last question. Um, sure. As you evolve your business and start, you know, adding diversified product lines, have you considered adding video or multimedia or anything into your mix? Yeah, I have. And I have done it a little bit. Um, actually, for one of the dog birthday parties, um, they asked us about video. And I had a friend who had a lot. I have some video experience, but he had more than, than I do. So he came along and we did deliver a video. We did like a music video kind of thing for the party. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, which was a pretty big hit. Yeah, we had, uh, we had it all timed out and we spent some time on it. It ended up being pretty cool. I can send it to you. Yeah, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see that. Yeah, yeah video is uh, something, I mean, it. Funny thing is, I went to film school learning video and film, and that's what I mostly did in film school. But photography was what I ended up liking more. Yeah. So, but yeah, now like, I get that I, I get asked that more and more. So right now I've done some sort of sort of little snippet, little brief videos of the dogs running around on the shoot. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. But I haven't done anything too serious with it. I, you know, get the request here and there though. Well, it'll come and that D seven thousand will handle it, so you'll be good to go. <laughs> D7000, and I'm also using the NEX7, which oh, I've been cool. playing a lot. So. Nice, yeah. You, you, I just did an interview with Trey about his Sony yeah. NEX7. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It's, I it's love cool. that. I struggle with the same thing you guys have talked about. Yeah, I, I've used it on some of my shoots, but I get looks because it's so small. So mm-hmm. Maybe it doesn't look professional enough, so I go back to the big D7000 with the battery grip and the 24 to 70 lens. I call it the uh, photography as performance art, right? Yeah. So you have to you have to show up looking like a stereotypical photographer in order to yeah. inspire confidence in the clients, right? Yeah, yeah. The D7000 gets used here and there on my own, but mostly it's the NEX7 when I'm doing my own stuff and the D7000 on the pro shoots. That's crazy. The D7000 for, uh, for the appearances and all the cool yeah. stuff is done with the small camera. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. Cool. I can, you know, the NEX7 puts out stuff that uh, matches up to it pretty. I, I sometimes have to look at which camera I was shooting with to figure it out. Isn't that crazy? That's yeah. crazy. Pretty impressive. Cool, Jeff. Well, thank you. Thank you for taking the time today to, to chat with me about this. It's, this is awesome. Once again, you are Shaggy Shutterbug. I wrote it down on my little sticky right here. ShaggyShutterbug.com, right? Yeah, ShaggyShutterbug.com. Uh, you can find me on Yelp, read my reviews, and uh, more social media coming soon. You can like our Facebook page. Cool. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I, I, as I said, I'm a fan of the show. I enjoy listening every week. No, oh, no, thank you. Thank you for coming on and thanks for listening. <laughs>